Welcome to the next installment in our Making You the Scientist video series. In today's video, we're going to go over five different fun challenges that you can do at home with your kids on the weekend, or you can do these in your classroom as lecture launchers. Everything you need, except maybe this copper tube, you can get at your local grocery store. So let's get started. Okay, challenge number one. Can you pick up a whole bottle of rice using just a wooden skewer. Now the way I like to do this, of course, is invite a student up to try it out. And the first thing you'll notice is this bottle has a groove in it. And so most of the time, the students will take both wooden skewers and they'll put the wooden skewers on the bottle and lift up like that. And they think they got it all figured out. So then I'll ask them to do that with the bigger bottle. The bigger bottle has no groove on it, so you can't do that. So then I'll say to them, okay, put one skewer down and pick up a whole bottle of rice using just a single wooden skewer. Now, sometimes I get help from students in the class and there's really only one thing that you can do and that's to stick the wooden skewer inside the bottle of rice. And if you stick it in there just right, you'll notice that you can pick up 500 milliliters, a whole bottle of rice using just one wooden skewer. And you can do the same thing with the one liter bottle. If you put it in there nicely like that, then you'll notice you can pick up a whole liter of rice using just one skewer. Now, the real point is, how does it work? Why can you pick up a whole ball of rice using just a wooden skewer? Gravity pulls down and you pull up on the wooden skewer. The reason you can do that is the friction between the rice and the wooden skewer allows you to pick up a whole ball of rice using a single wooden skewer. Challenge number two. The second challenge is for this. The students has to get this water into this glass. And you can just invite a student up and say the challenge is to get the water from the beaker into the glass. And they will simply just take the water from the beaker and pour it into the glass like that. No problem. All right, now let's make the challenge a little bit more interesting. You'll notice on my tray here, I have two lines. One line and two lines. The challenge now is to pour the water from the beaker into the glass, the beaker must stay on one side of the line and the glass must stay on the other side of the line. Now you'll notice here, I have some string and I'll invite a student to come up and try and do that, keeping the beaker over here and the glass over here. Now you'll notice I have some rags up here because this can get a little messy and you gotta be careful how you do this so that students don't make too much mess, all right? So they'll try and you gotta stop them if they're gonna do something you don't want them to do. And they might try something with the string, but usually they can't figure it out. But you can see if you take the string and put it in the beaker and you put the other end of the string in the glass that you can simply pour that water right down the string. If you pour it too fast, it might drip a little bit, but you can pour the water right down the string. Now, of course, the important thing is how does that work? Why can you pour the water down the string? Well, it has to do with the cohesive and the adhesive forces of the water. The cohesive forces keep the water stuck together so it'll pour down the string, and the adhesive forces between the water and the string allow you to pour the water right down the string. So there you go, that's challenge number two. Challenge number three. This is a great one because you get to play with marbles. This is what you gotta do. You're just gonna take one marble, put it on the table, and the challenge is to get this marble into this beaker using just this wine glass. Now, you gotta practice. So here we go, we're gonna show you how to do it. Okay, here we go. Marble wine glass. Use the wine glass to get the marble into this glass. This is how you do it. Challenge number four, the center of mass. In this challenge, you wanna be able to find the center of mass of an object. The center of mass is simply the point about which the object will balance. Here I have a piece of copper tubing. It's pure copper tubing, 
and the mass is evenly distributed about the other, excuse me. So this one, it's pretty easy. The center mass is gonna be right in the middle, and you can see if I place my fingers in the middle, I can just pick it up right like that. That's the center mass. The center mass is in the middle because the mass is evenly distributed along that object. What if I have an object where the mass is not evenly distributed all along the object? For example, this mop. This mop has more mass at this end than it does at this end. And that means that the center of mass of this mop is not going to be in the middle. It won't balance if I place my fingers in the middle. So how do we find the center mass? Well, there's a little trick you can do. You just take one finger and put it at one end and one finger and put the other end and just simply bring your fingers together and you will notice that you always end up with your fingers at the center of mass, just like that. It doesn't matter whether you do it slow or you should be able to do it quickly. You gotta be a little bit more careful to do it quickly, but you'll always end up at the center of mass. The center of mass is the point about which that object will balance. Challenge number five. I have a tube here. This is made out of cardboard. I have a wooden hoop and I have a marker up here. The challenge here is to get the marker into the tube without touching the marker. You can touch the hoop, but you can't touch the marker. All right, and here we go. This is how you do it. This is a great demonstration for Newton's laws of motion. Because as you know, according to Newton's first law, objects in motion will stay in motion, but objects at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. This object, this marker, is at rest because it is not experiencing unbalanced forces. The force of gravity is pulling the marker down, and there's a balanced force pulling up and pushing the marker up to keep it from falling. If I remove the hoop, then there will be an unbalanced force and the marker will experience just the force of gravity and the marker will fall into the tube. Thank you for joining us for today's Making You the Scientist video. That was five challenging, interesting, thought-provoking, but hopefully mostly fun physics challenges. Try them out at home. Try them in your classroom. Make learning fun. Have fun with your students. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, support our channel, Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment. Click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything and share this video. And we'll see you in the next video.